one, we get a current player, the reigning WCC Player of the Week. Matter of fact, I believe it's the fifth Zag of this season to win that award. Someone who uh, I love watching play because he does all the little things so well. In addition to shooting it from deep, uh, he's been hot from beyond the arc lately. The Frenchman, he took over that moniker since Killian Tilly left. Joel Ayayi. Joel, how goes life today? Uh, pretty good. Thank you. Uh, you know, it's been uh, it's been different since, you know, a year or so. But, uh, you know, we're still enjoying life and uh, making sure uh, we're sharing good moments with people. And uh, I have the chance to be in the, in the locker room and you know how, uh, how precious it is. So, yeah, it, it's been something that when you listen to Coach Few's press conferences or comments um, about wanting to do everything that he can to give you guys opportunities to play amount of games uh, and have as normal a season as possible. Um, within the team, how much appreciation do you guys have for Coach Few and him really trying to set up the most difficult schedule he can for you guys this year? Um, that's huge. I mean, we love and we really appreciate what he's doing. Um, he's been, you know, working a lot and uh, the guys around him working hard to be uh, first to be able to, you know, have games. And sometimes it's been on a fly. I mean, one game gets canceled and uh, you just replace it with another big game. And uh, I mean, we really, really love that. Um, that's, you know, that's why we came back. That's why people are committed here. Um, and, you know, that's why we practice every day. Um, Obviously, you know, every game matters, especially, you know, uh, this year where we don't know when, how many games we're going to have. But uh, they've been working really hard for us to be able to have those opportunities, and we're really thankful for them. Well, you mentioned kind of reorganizing, reshuffling the schedule on, on short notice. That actually just happened within the last couple hours. The Santa Clara game yesterday was canceled. Uh, you guys are hoping to reschedule that. But all of a sudden, BYU gets slid into the schedule uh, in a couple days, you guys look big picture, but how easy or how difficult is it having to readjust who you guys prepare for? Um, it's not easy, especially uh, the fact that we prepare a lot, you know, uh, whoever we're playing, we have a, a lot of preparation. Uh, we really value this, this aspect of the game, you know, going into the game ready. But uh, we all want to be professionals and uh, we all have to adapt and uh, have a a professional approach on that, which means, you know, if the game is canceled, okay, forget about it. And the eyes are on the next game. And no matter how much time we have, you know, we played back to back. So um, you have to, you know, literally in cup, in what, maybe a couple hours of shoot around, get ready about the other team. And uh, um, we have today's good thing is that a bunch of us, you know, kind of know BYU because it, now it's conference play. So, you know, with the years, you kind of get experience, but uh, every year is it's a new team, it's a new um, style of play, so it's going to be huge, you know, to get the freshmen up to it, and uh, even for us, you know, seniors uh, and juniors to be able to understand um, what they do now and what the coaches want us to do. Double doubles are a big thing for for big men on the interior, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. You're a guard, and you've got three consecutive double doubles you had a game earlier this year you had 18 rebounds I think it was against Iowa uh, I, I think I didn't even scratch six rebounds in a game out at, at any point and coach few was always harping on me about get to the nail area and try to find a long rebound you as a guard have such a knack uh, for, for finding opportunities on the glass both offensively and defensively is that something that that has always kind of been a trait of yours uh, yeah, I think it was, um, you know, early in my life, my dad uh, used to tell my sister, uh, who's older than me, that, you know, the the more things she can do on the floor, the more things she can bring to the team, the better it would be for her. And, uh, you know, listening to all that, you know, really young, I just, I was, you know, a pretty tall guard. So uh, it was, you know, for me to go help out and, you know, dig some rebounds, I just fell in love with it, to be honest. Uh, I just realized it's all about effort. You don't always, you know, get reward because you don't grab all the rebounds. But at the same time, the balls don't always, you know, come your way or sometimes you misread one. So um, for me, you know, to have that ability, you know, Coach gives me full freedom, you know, offensive board, defensive board. He just allowed me to do whatever I want because he trusts me on that. And, uh, you know, for me, I just try to give the trust back and uh, go as hard as I can every time. And, uh, you know, sometimes 
I go for a short rebound and the ball bounced, like you said, I didn't nail. And I'm like, dang, you know, I'm <laughs> pretty <laughs> sure on that one. Would I rather have me, you know, do the guard play? But um, that, that happens. And uh, for me, it's all about um, giving my best, you know, to go grab extra couple of possessions or just secure the ball for us. You mentioned earning Coach Few's trust to be able to go out and, and have freedom on the offensive glass and, and the defensive glass uh, to, to find opportunities. How long did it take you to that, that you felt to earn Coach Few's trust in, in that aspect of the game? Um, to be honest, that's something that I was doing my first couple of years even when I wasn't playing. So as soon as I got, um, you know, that playing time, that was one thing that happened after, you know, a couple of games or third games. It was like he actually, you know, said it. But um, I just felt the freedom at first because that's something that he was he, he would praise me for, you know, in my second year. And uh, um, everybody knew that I, I was kind of, you know, good at rebounding. So he kind of gave me that freedom really early. I want to go back to your kind of upbringing in France. You, you mentioned your dad and your older sister kind of in regards to teaching the game, talking about the game. Was basketball the only sport that you loved growing up or were there other sports? And, and then what made basketball your path? Um, I was definitely trying to play soccer. Um, I obviously started with basketball because my whole family played. Um, my dad and my sister, at least, and – I had I was playing both at some point, and uh, I just had to uh, you know at some point make a decision. It was either soccer or basketball, and uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. My family kind of like you know tossed me into basketball, but uh, I, I don't regret it now. But uh, obviously, I still you know love soccer. Um, that's something I you know I love playing and I love watching. But uh, yeah, it was it was between those two. Growing up over there. You know, obviously the NBA is a big deal. College basketball has become a, a bigger deal uh, as more European players have had success. Did you find yourself growing up watching more NBA or college? And at what point did you realize you wanted to come play college basketball in the States? So I started watching NBA because the players I knew, you know, Tony Parker, Boris Dia, were in the NBA. Um, you know, I think around maybe – Nine, ten years old, I actually like sat down and started watching games and not only just allies on TV, you know. And uh, I started watching college maybe when I was 15. Um, to me, it was just about I know that there is people playing college basketball. So let's, out of curiosity, let's just start watching, you know. I know that all those guys that I see playing in the NBA come from somewhere. So um, let me see where they come from and how they play the game. And, uh, you know, after a year or two, I was really like, I kind of fell in love with college basketball. I was like, you know, there is a reason all those guys, you know, are so good at some point in the NBA. Like I said, they come from somewhere. So um, uh, let's keep on watching. And then I really started like believing that, that it was the best option for me uh, coming here and play basketball. Was Gonzaga an easy option for you when Tommy Lloyd started recruiting you? I know Gonzaga and Tommy have had great experience uh, with European guys and also, you know, some French guys. Killian Tilly, Roni yeah. Turioff, who was a teammate of mine, he was actually a freshman my senior year. Um, you know, it, did that make it easier for you knowing that they all had great success here at Gonzaga? Um, yeah, for sure. And I mean, Killian was – Killian and I were in the same academy and the year before he left for Gonzaga. So, um, that was definitely, you know, kind of a, a safety blanket. And uh, when Gonzaga reached out for me, it was like basically I have the opportunity to play the more European type of basketball in the U.S. And it works in the U.S. So, you know, like I said, in my, in my, in my mind, it was like – it sounds like the perfect option. And then I visited here and I was like, whoa, like – are you kidding me? Like, I feel like everybody love each other. I feel like the community is like crazy. And I was 17, so I didn't want to go, you know, somewhere where I would have to be, you know, alone in my corner or just thinking about a coach, you know, coach change, which, you know, we know that uh, Coach Hughes has been doing such a good job. You know, he, you know, there's a really little amount of chance he, he just leaves Gonzaga. So that was, that was really important to me. And uh, that made Gonzaga yeah, a clear number one option. You know, when I look back at the start of your career and seeing you at practice that redshirt year, there were there were things that obviously I, I thought that if you became a little better in these areas, you were going to have a chance to be 
an impactful player and you've obviously done that and maybe more to be honest because I mean you're such a, an integral part of a number one ranked team but when I looked at you your freshman year and I was told your age I couldn't believe that you made that decision because when I was that age there is no way I could have moved halfway across the, the globe uh, to do something that I loved like basketball like you did how hard was that and how hard was the adjustment um, I say, I mean, it was hard, but also not hard. Um, in some way, it was hard because obviously I was young and I took a huge jump. And, you know, I had a bunch of, like, reassurance, but I still wasn't sure about everything. I was still, you know, going in, in something in somewhere that I didn't really know of. And, uh, you know, leaving my parents, leaving my, my country, it was, it was kind of hard. And, you know, hitting that wall right away, too, like the wall of you can't play because you're just not ready to play. Um, like, even though I know that I would, there was a good chance I was going to redshirt, you're still, you know, as a basketball player, you, you play great down there. You know, why would I hit that big of a wall? I hit it, and it was the, it was really difficult. But in the same time, I saw it as, like, like I said, I started watching college basketball, you know, and I was like, this is, this is the real deal, you know. This is uh, – this is not hiding in Europe. This is just going against the best. And I'm like, if I want to play in the NBA later, I will have to be a good NCAA player. There is no way I can just not be a good NCAA. So for me, it was just, okay, you know, instead of maybe hitting the wall in the NBA because I went through, you know, Europe and nobody really know what I can do, um, I'll, I'll go there. I'll hit that wall early. And if I, you know, if I can, you know, climb it, I guess it gives me a better chance at going there. It does not even mean that I can play. So that's a crazy thing. So it's like, for me, it was just, you know, the next step. And uh, it made sense for me. And uh, even if, you know, it was kind of, it was seen as the harder way. For me, it was just seen as the right way. You mentioned the goals of playing in the NBA. And, and Gonzaga's definitely changed from having an occasional NBA player to having a roster of guys every single year with multiple guys that have a, a legitimate chance or a legitimate future in the NBA. You flirted with the, the, the draft process last year. After coming away from, with, from that and staying at Gonzaga, what were the things that you focused on getting better at for this season? Um, I had to, you know, that's a thing with me. I feel like, like you said, there is a, my game is really like based on doing a, a bunch of everything. And uh, to me, it was just do everything a little bit better, you know, shoot the ball a little bit better, handle the ball a little bit better. Um, your body has to be a little bit better. Um, defensively, you have to be a little bit better. So um, to me, it's just I have this ability to just take your game to another level, work on a little bit of everything, you know, don't only rely on, on one skill and just get better, get better. And, um, you know, my attention to detail had to get better. So um, you can see as like, oh, there's a bunch of stuff to, to clean up, which is true. There's a bunch of stuff to clean up. But in my, the way I see it is just, just get better. Just get better. Go to the gym and work on something. And um, at some point, you will see the improvement. And uh, I think, you know, I, I, I think I did that uh, this summer. And I think it's paying off right now. But, uh, you know, I, I, I like not to look forward too much. Like I said, I just love getting better. So I kind of, like, no matter what they tell me or not, I plan on getting better anyway. So, you know, one of the hallmarks of the Gonzaga's program is guys get better. You know, it happened. It's happened for the last 25 years. Guys have maybe been overlooked in the in the recruiting process and then they blossom. They become tremendous players. Uh, Corey Kispert's continued to, to improve over the course of the year. He's now looking like a, a possible All-American. Your game has continued to grow. Now they're getting some guys like Jalen Suggs who are – talked about as being potential one and done lottery pick type guys. What does he bring to the team that the average fan, yeah, you can see the great passing, the intensity, but as a teammate who's been there for three years, how seamlessly has he blended in and what does he truly bring to your guys' ball club? Uh, I think he just brings like a kind of unselfishness mixed with, uh, mixed with like his high energy um, I mean, you know, it's like he, he's still a freshman, so, you know, he'll he'll take a, you know, a technical because he hangs on the rim. But, you know, it's like that's that's the type of thing that he that, that's him, you know, high energy, uh, really, you know, a, a bunch of emotions and but controlled emotions. And uh, he just get everybody going. Um, I mean, you just, you know, for example, 
from TV, you see him making a three, but for us, it's like you make it, he makes a three and you see his reaction and he just gets everybody going. So it's kind of more, more than a three. And uh, he just brings yeah, that, that freshness and that, that high energy that is just contagious. You mentioned watching NBA guys uh, growing up and Roni Turioff, Tony Parker, Boris Diaw, I believe is from your hometown. Yeah. We were teammates for, for a short stint in the NBA. I thought he was tremendous. He was, he was very similar to you in that he did a ton of things really well. Is there one of those Frenchmen that spent time in the NBA that's mentored you um, and kind of really kind of shared with you uh, the tiny nuances of the game that to, to continue to focus on? Um, I know uh, I know Boris a little bit because, like you said, he's from my hometown. And uh, we actually, like, during the lockout, he came back and played in the same club as me. Obviously, he was with the pros and I was with the youngsters. So, um, and, uh, you know, I'm, we talked a little bit I think two years ago uh, in Utah and stuff. So uh, we've been, you know, we, we've been talking a little bit. Roni is obviously uh, talking with me a, a bit more now that uh, I went to Gonzaga. And uh, it's just great to have that, you know, the ability to have those those role models, um, you know, above your head. And if you have a question, you can just go and ask freely. Um, so, I mean, I'm thankful for that. But uh, that's also, you know, how far GU got me, you know, those type of connections. I'm not sure if they happen. Maybe they do, maybe with some other players, you know, but that's kind of like thanks to GU. So that's, that's also, you know, part of I came here and no matter what's happening, I will have those connections now. So I want to ask you a couple quick hitting questions where I'll ask it quickly. And the first guy that comes to mind, I want you to answer it. I've done this with a couple guys that I've had on Killian, Josh Perkins, to name a couple. So if you have one open three for a Gonzaga player, either current or former to shoot, to win a, to, to win the game, who is it? I get Corey Gispert. Love it. Love it. He's been on, on fire. That's for sure. But I will say this, thank you for only letting him hit nine threes the other day and and not breaking my record, but just tying that. So thank you. I was about to say, now that he's at least at the same level of you stat-wise, there, there's no question. Uh, but like <laughs> said, it, it's still a tie as a now. So. Well, I asked him the other day before the game from, from our broadcast perch, I said, how come the guys didn't get you one more look? And he just kind of shrugged his shoulders and gave me a look. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, the way he's shooting it right now, there's a good chance he's got a, uh, another big game yeah. like that coming. For sure. Uh, best low post player that you have seen in Gonzaga history? Um, I feel like I have to go with Shemek just because, like, how crafty he was, you know, even if he was double teamed every game, I feel like he had the answer, a little pass over the shoulders, behind the back. And, I mean, he was just a bully down there. He was – even double teams, you know, couldn't stop him. So, uh, I think it's not only because of how physical and how big he was, but also how crafty and how selfish he was. I can't – I can't disagree with, with Shemek on the low block. I love that answer. You have a pick and roll with any Gonzaga big, past per, past or current. Who's it going to be? I'm going to have to go with Brendan Clark. I mean, he – with him, the passing window and, like, the margin of error of your passes are just, like, shrink, basically. You can pass it a little bit on the left. He will go, go get it. Um, you know, we dream our retro year, we're together. And, uh, I mean, it's just – you pass him the ball, he will go get it. No matter where it is, he will go get it. He will roll hard and look for the lob. So, it's like he will make you good as a passer, that's for sure. I would have loved to have played with Brandon Clark. I had Casey Calvary way back yeah. uh, in the day. I don't know if you've seen the highlights, but uh, lob dunks, just throw it up. He's going to get it. He yeah. just broke a backboard in a game uh, at Spokane Arena. Uh, back in, in a college in, basketball game? College basketball game. He broke a backboard. It was unbelievable. <laughs> that uh one of our guys came down a mid pick and roll little pocket pass casey's coming down the lane two hand over the top on over the top of a guy got fouled broke the rim it was one of the most amazing plays i've ever seen in person yeah i need to check that for sure yeah ask ask tommy lloyd about it he'll tell you about it for sure i think brian michelson would have been he would have been on the bench uh as one of our players that day too uh last question though um with with how this season has started and how your Gonzaga career has continued to evolve. 
what would a storybook ending be for you as you kind of move on from Gonzaga to the next phases of your career? Um, I mean, obviously, you know, winning a, a national championship is, is the, you know, people kind of take it for granted because we're, you know, close to it every year and that's our objective every year. But I mean, there is so much work to put into it and so much variables that it would really be, I mean, it would be something like crazy to me. I can't even describe it, obviously, because I didn't win it yet. But it's like, that's something, you know, you dream about. You go to bed thinking about it, uh, you know, no matter how close or how far you are. And it's just, it's, it's kind of more than the main goal. It's kind of like a reward. You know, it would be a reward for so many people, you know, the whole community, the coaching staff, for all the players that played. I mean, there is so much going on. And uh, it's not pressure at all. It's literally just, having the chance and the opportunity to just do something that is much bigger than yourself. And in life, I mean, I don't think there is, I don't think there is like that many opportunities to like reach so many people in such an you know, easy way. It's just playing basketball basically. But uh, to have the opportunity to reach so many people, it would, be, it would really be awesome. Well, Joel, I've appreciated watching the growth of your game. Um, I love that answer because quite frankly, uh, I was on a, on a couple really good teams. We didn't ever make it to the Final Four. Uh, but you, if you guys get back to a Final Four and win a title, uh, you will have the complete support and excitement from us former players. And, and we'll feel a small part of it, that's for sure. But uh, we've enjoyed watching the program develop. I've enjoyed watching you develop. And I'm looking forward to watching this team continue to maximize its potential. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dan. Appreciate you. And I appreciate the support.